Hi guys, TCG Straker here, and we're back with another video. I'm going to apologize ahead of time if this seems a little rushed. I have to leave the house really soon as I'm recording this, so my bad. Um, <laughs> but without further ado, let's get started with the Legend Tribe Showcase. Now the first card we have here is our first promo rare, which is our Mask of Dark One. I'm not going to explain this card too much because this is a reprint from the Legend Tribe Strike Deck. I'll leave a description to that to the video where I describe all the Strike Decks down below. Then we have the Dark One, uh, same as last time, it's just a reprint from the Strike Decks. And next we have Otherworld Gate. It is the Legend Tribe Fortress for set 2. And it is a fortress with 20 HP. And its ability is that at the end of your turn, if three or more Legend Tribe Warriors died this turn, then you may deploy a rank 1 or lower warrior from your crypt. Now this card can be really useful because, hey, if you can actually get this ability off, you get a free warrior. And you can never turn down a free warrior. Uh, the next card we have is Harvest Soul. It's the common spell for set 2. And its ability is that choose a Legend Tribe Warrior you control. Draw cards equal to its power and it gains the following ability. Doomed. At the end of your turn, this warrior is killed. This warrior cannot be ranked up. Now what Harvest Soul does is it gives some really, really much needed draw power to the legend tribe which that's kind of what i focused on with the spells in the set is just trying to give the legend tribe a good draw engine because they are a combo based deck but aside from stone beacon in set one they really didn't have a reliable draw engine to rely on oh yeah also drawing cards equal to a warrior's power may seem broken but at the same time Thanks to Harvest Soul's ability, you can't rely on that warrior for too much. So if you use this on your super powerful warrior, well, it's just going to die at the end of the turn. Uh, there are cards that you can use, you can take advantage with this, with uh, cards like uh, the dragons from set one. But overall, this is a really amazing card for the Legend Tribe, and it should push for some more interesting plays from them. Then next we have the spell rune for the Legend Tribe, Fairy Tale. It is a spell rune with 3 durability, and it has the ability that during your turn, when the Legend Tribe warrior you control dies, you may draw a card. Now what this kind of does is it rewards you for killing off your own warriors. And again, you may think this is a little powerful, but the Legend Tribe doesn't have a reliable draw engine. Uh, like, if you look back into set 1, Space Tribe had uh, White Hole as a really good draw engine for them. And the L Nature Tribe, well, they don't really need a draw engine just because of how aggressive they are. So this should really help with uh, Legend Tribe players to kind of keep your combos up and help not get draw fatigue. Okay, and our first common of this, our first common warrior of the set is Beholder Spawn. It is a rank zero with zero power, and the bad timing ability. When a Legend Tribe warrior you control is killed, you may spend one action. If you do, deploy this warrior from your crypt to your war zone. Now this is a recovery effect for them. Uh, basically, in set two, I focused on with the leg with the Legend Tribe to kind of help with recovery and help with consistency within the deck. And this is another card that will help you do that. Um, also, this card combos off with a card we're going to see later. So you know what? We'll get to that later. The next card we have is Wisp. It is a rank 0 with 0 power and the Lost Path ability. During your turn when this warrior is killed, you may draw a card. Very simple, another card to help you with drawing. And also note that it has zero power. 
So you don't really want to use Harvest Soul with it. You just kind of be wasting the spell. The next card we have is Lost Spirit. It is a rank zero warrior with one power and the haunt ability. When this warrior is deployed from your crypt, you may add a rank one or lower legend tribe warrior from your deck to your hand. Now, this is a good ability because it automatically synergizes with Otherworld Gate. It also synergizes with a card we're gonna see later. Also, you may be thinking, wait a second, Striker, there's already a card in set one that was called Lost Spirit. And you would be correct. That card would be Lost Spirit. Well, I guess, obviously. Uh, this was the rank two vanilla from set one. One. Again, I'll link that down in the description below. But, yeah. Like I said in the Roly Poly ruling video, if you have two cards with the same name, you can't run four of each. You can run a... They count as the same card, basically, when you're deck building. So you can run two of this one and two of that one, or three of this one and one of this one, or just four each of these. But you can't run more than four of cards named Lost Spirit. So this will provide you an interesting deck building choice. Do you want the rank two vanilla or the card that can let you add uh, Legend Tribe Warriors from your crit, from your deck, sorry. <laughs> so again, it's an interesting mechanic choice that I chose for set two and I hope you guys like it. Also, there's another reason for calling it Lost Spirit that we'll see in a little bit. Uh, next, we have Scared Buckler. It is a rank zero warrior with zero power and the Scared ability. When this warrior, this warrior cannot battle rank zero warriors. So this is a good defensive card for the Legend Tribe because it forces your opponent to kind of play around it. If you drop this in your shield zone, your opponent can't just drop a rank zero warrior of their own and trade it into it. They have to use their rank zero. They have to use rank one or higher warriors to kill it. And so this should be a really good defensive card for the legend tribe. Next, we have another card for the slime archetype. If you guys don't remember, the slimes were an archetype from set one that all revolved around having them moved into the war zone, and the slimes of set two are no different. But we have Spear Slime. It is a rank zero warrior with one power, and the Goo Throw ability. When this warrior is moved into your war zone, you may kill this warrior. If you do, deal two damage to your opponent. So hey, Space Tribe isn't the only tribe that can burn your opponent now. This is an interesting card, and I honestly haven't built a slime deck and played around with them yet, but this card should be very interesting. Also note that it does count for your kill count in Otherworld Gate, so you can use this in a Legend Tribe deck that revolves around Otherworld Gate. Yeah. Then next we have the Legend Tribe Roly Poly. It's a rank one with two power. And I'm not going to go over this ability because again, like last time, I made a whole video explaining the Roly Poly cards, which I will link down in the description below again. The next we have Dream Clown. It is a rank one warrior with two power and the multicultural ability. This warrior is also treated as being from the Big Top tribe. Um, again, in set one, I had the other two multicultural warriors, and because a new tribe was added to set two, I needed to make another one. So this is our Dream Clown. And when I first drew this, I thought it looked cute. Now I think it kind of looks creepy. In a very cartoony way. I'm a weird person, don't question me. Um, <laughs> uh, next we have Chochin Obake. 
It is a rank 1 warrior with 2 power and the Rehaunt ability. When this warrior dies, you may deploy a lost spirit from your crypt. It cannot attack or be ranked up this turn. So remember when I said that I was giving you guys an interesting deck building choice? Well, if I can pull it out. So when Chochin Obake dies, you can deploy either this Lost Spirit or this Lost Spirit, whichever one you have in your crypt. So basically, this adds a more utility to this card and kind of gives you an interesting deck building choice. Because, hey, I'm using Chochin Obake. Do I want to grab a Beater or a card that will help me set up next turn? And overall, this should be a very cool card to, for you guys to play around with. Uh, then next, we have Fairy Dragon. It is a rank 1 warrior with 2 power and the Holy Scales ability. During your turn, this warrior cannot be killed. Now this may seem counterintuitive for the Legend Tribe, especially since they have so many effects that synergize off being killed. But at the same time, you can look at it in a different way. If you use this with a card like Harvest Soul, that's basically just a free draw 2, or even a draw 3 if you use Extra Sharp on it. And overall kind of gives a little bit more variety to the Legend Tribe playstyle. Next we have the grown-up version of Scared Buckler. In Defending Shield, it is a rank 1 warrior with 2 power and the Defend ability. This warrior cannot battle rank 2 or higher warriors. So again, this is another amazing defensive effect. And it mostly <laughs> kind of nerfs the space tribe a little bit. Because if you drop this in your shield zone, most of the time your opponent's going to be, if they're using a space tribe deck, as long as it's not a deck that focuses around a cloning unit, then they're most of the time in their war zone, they're only going to have like ranks twos and threes in there. So if you throw defending shield into your shield zone, you're kind of forcing them to... Basically, it's another one of those cards that your opponent's forced to play around it. They have to deploy a rank one warrior, and unless they have the vanilla handy, they're going to be crashing that warrior into your shield. So again, it's an amazing defensive card for the Legend Tribe. And the next card we have is another addition to the Slime Archetype, and that is Charge Slime. It is a rank 1 warrior with 1 power and the Goo Charge ability. When this warrior is moved into the war zone, it gains 1 power until the start of your next turn. So basically, if you can manage to move this card in between your zones a bunch of times, you can get this card's power up pretty high. Now you may be thinking that's kind of a weak effect, especially since it starts at power of 1, but there are a couple of cards in set 2, and actually there's a, even a card in set 1 that just makes moving your slimes really easy. So this is a very, this is a very cool card and it can become a very deadly beater if you don't keep it in check. And now we're moving on to our rares. So our first rare is Baby Troll. It is a rank 0 warrior with 0 power. And the adorable ability. When Baby Troll is attacked, your opponent must discard a card or take 1 damage. Again, it's another really good defensive card. <laughs> card, um... Set 2 is really a defensive and draw power set for the Legend Tribe because they got a couple really good uh, kind of like beatdown cards in set 1. And these cards will just kind of help with consistency and staying alive. Oop, and next we have the Beholder. It is a rank 2 warrior with 3 power and the Rebirth ability. 
Once per turn at the start or end of your turn, if this card is in your crypt, you may kill a Beholder spawn you control. If you do, deploy this warrior from your crypt. Now, if you guys remember, the very first warrior we reviewed in this showcase was the Beholder spawn. Now, these two cards just synergize off each other like crazy. Uh, the Beholder spawn, when a warrior is killed, you can spend an action to drop it on your field. Well, the Beholder allows you to kill your spawn in order to play it. Now, a good thing to note, guys, is that during your opponent's turn, you have no actions. So you can't use the Beholder spawn ability during your opponent's turn, even if you intentionally save an action. So that's a way I kind of nerfed this combo, is by having your actions not carry over through your opponent's turn. But yeah, this is a very powerful ability, and it's kind of neat to see a new boss. This is kind of this can be your boss card for a for a legend tribe deck. Actually, if you guys want, I can build you. I've been thinking about like uh, deck profiles to make in the future, and I was thinking either a beholder deck or a slime deck for. Yeah, uh, if you guys want, in the description below, tell me which one you'd rather see. But let's move on with the final slime card of set two. And that is Lord Slime. It is a rank two warrior with three power and the Royal Engulf ability. Up to twice per turn, when a warrior you control with slime in its name is moved into the war zone, you may draw a card and this warrior gains one power until the start of your next turn. So kind of like right off the bat, this is a very powerful ability. And also something really good to note here is that its ability works on itself too. If you move Lord Slime into the war zone, you can use the Royal Engulf ability to draw a card and increase its power. But this adds a lot of synergy to the Slime archetype and kind of adds more utility to moving your warriors through the zones. Because all of them just kind of, they move themselves, they get an ability. However, Lord Slime does work to kind of unify them towards a common goal. And overall, this card is kind of goofy and I love it. Because look, he has a little crown and a diamond inside of him. Also, fun fact... He is the only slime to have more than one object on him. Brain slime had a brain. Dungeon slime had a eyeball. Spear slime had a spear. Charge slime had a battery. But this one has a diamond and a crown. I'll just let that sink in for a second. Okay, moving on to the final card in today's showcase. And that is Aaron, Geist Keeper. It is a rank 2 warrior with 3 power and the soul release ability. Uh, twice per turn, you may kill a legend tribe warrior you control. If you do, draw cards equal to its rank and this warrior gains 1 power until end of turn. Kind of see there's a common theme with the legend tribe warriors in this set. <laughs> um, again, well first of all I kind of want to say that this is one of my favorite artworks from set 2. Also, this artwork took me way too long to draw. Like, way longer than it probably should have. But, uh, for all of you who don't know, Aaron is a... It's basically like the Celtic version of Hades. He's the god of... Well, death. <laughs> but... For Aaron in the game, Soul Release is going to be a very powerful ability well it is a very useful ability especially with cards like otherworld gate you can use his ability to easily increase your count and hopefully get your yourself over to that three marker on here and his ability is and his ability is that he not only draws cards but he also gains power 
Now, do note that his that he only gains power until the end of your of the turn, unlike Lord Slimes until the start of your next turn. And that's because killing warriors is easier than moving warriors between zones. Yeah, but with that really cool Omega Rare out of the way. Also, something else I want to note is that with the Omega Rares in this set, I tried giving them more interesting backgrounds than the rares. Because, hey, Omega Rares, they need to stand out. But, guys, that was it for the Set 2 Legend Tribe Showcase. Uh, if you like this video, please leave, please leave a like, and if you like this game, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Wow, I have not said that in a long time. What is wrong with me? <laughs> uh, anyways, guys, I hope you have an amazing Saturday, and I'll see you next week. Alright, goodbye!